Good evening, everyone. Welcome along to the SFC interviews. This is Mike Heinemann here with Jude Sterling. So, uh, how are you doing, Jude? Hopefully, uh, everything's all right where you are, mate. Yeah, very well, thank you. Just, um, I'm, 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 co- I'm coaching at the minute. Um, yeah. After, after football, now I've, I've turned my hand to coaching. Um, so yeah, so obviously the COVID hasn't hasn't helped, but um, but yeah, we're, we're we're easing back in. That's good. It's a, a nice evening, a nice day for it as well to be out there doing that today. Um, so uh, you know, it was a, bit, a little bit too hot actually to to probably be running around and, and coaching and all of that. But uh, it was um, yeah. obviously quite nice uh, nice weather out as well. Yeah, well, the, the young footballers they um they they play in any weather. They, they you know. They've got the energy to, to to play in any weather, any any terrain. Doesn't yeah. really matter. They love their football, and this is <clears throat> this is a, a massive reason why I like working with them because, um, as you can imagine, I've played at I've played at most you know up up until League One. Yeah. Um, and you know the, the main thing the main thing I played football was for was for um, enjoyment. Mm-hmm. It was for enjoyment. So what what you what you find. As you go in through the leagues, is that um, football's a simple game made complicated by coaches and players, and and young young footballers now, um, they're, they're they're a lot more informed than we were when we were younger, and coaches are a lot more informed now. Um, it's very it's very much old school. So in terms of weather, we take all these things into consideration. Yeah. Whereas back in the day when we played, it was it was seen as almost weak. If it was too hot, you know, yeah. it was seen as weak. If you if you if you complained about the weather, so you know, all all of it's geared up for 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 English football to be to be better. Um, my ambition as a coach, as a footballer, it was to play in the World Cup for England. Mm-hmm. Now, as yeah. a coach, was to try and help England win the World Cup by coaching players, the younger generation. Them yeah, them. yeah, yeah. You know, that's good then. Um, and then. Uh... We'll, we'll get into it really. So, what was your reasons behind why, why you joined up with Stevenage initially? It was on the loan from Luton, and then it was made permanent after um, a couple of months. Was it? Was it about three or four months in the end? Yeah, um, I was at I was at Luton, obviously, and I'd, I'd just been selected in the under eighteen England squad. Yeah. Um, so I thought, you know, Joe Kinnear was the manager. Mm-hmm. I, I really thought I, I deserved uh, a chance to play in the team. Um, I was in and around the squad, yeah. but I wanted to be playing. Um, I had a taste of it and it was something that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, as a young footballer, you, you've got friends that are playing football as well. And, you know, various players at different clubs. You had people like Joby McEnough and Lionel Morgan and those people that we all, we all grew up in the same football team. OK, um, yeah, yeah. Sunday team. So my dad was the manager of it. So... Um, once you got to sort of eighteen, it was it was almost a race to see who could play the first you know first first team game. Mm-hmm. You know, every, everyone wanted to to be that first person. So it was a, it was a little bit of that really. It was, it was quite immature, um, you know. But Stevenage, being a local, being a team close to Luton, um, I, I had worked with Wayne Turner previously, um, yeah. and he he. Um, yeah, he gave me an opportunity to come across. Um, I, kn- I knew Wayne as somebody that was going to try to improve, improve my my general game understanding, uh-huh. and my technical ability. Um, you know, and I thought working working with with somebody like that in a first team environment, with that added little bit of pressure of having to perform week in week out, may have um, helped me in my career. You know. Um, so right, it just, you know, yeah, it was just, was just it was just one of those. Really. No, I was just going to say that. Obviously, you, you know, it was only Luton that was uh, where you were playing, so it was only you know a, a local journey for you. Um, I suppose you didn't really have to move or anything like that as well. You could kind of just travel in every day. Well, I I, I live in North London, so okay. um, you know, I was staying, I was staying at Luton, but then obviously when my my loan was up and my contract ended at Luton. Yeah. I was commute. I was commuting from London to, to train, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh-huh. and I picked up. I used to pick up um, DJ Campbell. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who else used to jump in, but I had DJ Campbell in in my car. So, you know, it was, and DJ was somebody that I 
used to play with at London when, when we played for London and Middlesex together. So, yeah, but the, no, it just came about, you know, I wanted some first team football and Stevenage were, were a club that I knew about, obviously, through people like Grazioli, like that, because um, obviously with the cup run is a, is a club that, you know, in terms of the romance of football, it was a... <laughs> Stevenage was a club that I'd heard of and um, I, I jumped at the chance, really. Um, and then we've got one here from Rye as well in the chat. Which team do you actually support? Who's your Who's your team that you follow? Arsenal. Arsenal, yeah, same as me. <laughs> Arsenal, Arsenal fan. First football memory, um, Michael Thomas um, going around the keeper, well, chipping the keeper mm-hmm. uh, to, win, to win the league 2-0 at Anfield. Great day. And then obviously the FA Cup as well. The other week was uh, quite a nice way to, you know, get yeah. something from the season, wasn't it, as well? Surprising. Um, yeah. I, I was very surprised. I, th- I think Lampard um, has been excellent since he's gone to, to Chelsea. Mm. Likewise, Arteta. Yeah. Um, and and the, the, what, I do, what, what I do like is the uncomplicated way in which Arsenal are playing now. Before it was all stepovers and... And, and one twos and which is you know part of football. If mm-hmm. if that's what you need to do to get in, yeah. then then suit then fine. But I watched um, I looked at the stats, uh, the Arsenal Chelsea game, and I think I think Arsenal by by the 60th minute, Arsenal had uh, put 14 crosses into the box. Now I don't care what team you are, if balls are coming into the box, you, you know at some point you're gonna, you know, it's, it's something's gonna happen. So. You know, I'm, I'm happy with Arsenal's progress at the moment. Um, long may it continue. Yeah, and then we've got a question here, going back to Stevenage again now. Uh, who was your best friend at Stevenage? And uh, a second part of that was on away days, who did you room with as well? Uh, I roomed with John Hampshire. Uh-huh. Um, he was my roommate. Um, but I... Uh, best friend? Uh, I, I don't know. It's a bit of a strange one. I'm, I'm one of those players that that tries to get on with everybody. Yeah. Um, I was fond of, of John Michel Seguet. Yes. Uh, he, was, he, uh-huh. was, he was a nice guy, gentleman. Yeah, and he'd done, uh, you know, obviously settling in as well, coming over from France uh, um, to, to get into that side as well. His, uh, he was a good striker. Sorry, as well. he's gone good... a bit quiet. I don't know what's happened there. That's all right. Can you hear me right now? Is that any better? Is that better? Can you hear me there? Hold on. Okay. All right. We'll get him back in a minute. Um, he's just going to refresh his page there because um, he is uh, he was coaching a minute ago as well, which is why we were just uh, waiting for him to hopefully get back on shortly. Um, so I was just uh, saying about he was just saying about Jean Michel Seguet, um, the French striker who was at the club. Is, is that better? You got me there now. Yes, much better. Okay, cool. Yeah, we were just saying about uh, Jean Michel Seguet, weren't we? Um, obviously coming over from France as well. Yeah, he, he was top man. Um, he 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 was one of those older players that um, he had the ability to, as a young player coming into a football club, um, you you look to you look to players to try and help and guide you and give you advice. And he was he was one of those people. He was a gentleman, real real nice man. And in that squad, there was quite a few uh, you know talented guys as well. Um, obviously, Jean Michel was in there. DJ was in there. Kirk Jackson was in there. Um, Jace was in Sam there. Sarge. Yeah, Sodge. Uh, Jace was in there. Robin Trot was in there. Clarky. Um, ah, Trotty. Sam McMahon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a gentleman. And and Clarky. Ah, oh, what what great what great people. And then obviously now, you know, being an Arsenal fan, you probably see quite a lot of Clarkey as well in the, in terms of the Arsenal commentaries and, and stuff that he does. Yeah. Yeah, he, I, I see him now and again. And um, no, real, real gentleman. Simon Wormel, gentleman yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, and then we've got Paul Armstrong as well. Paul's in. Um, okay. Yes, Jude, his favourite <laughs> saying was, was Ledge. Paul was obviously he one rem- of the players. He remembers. He remembers. He was one, one of the guys in your squad as well, was Paul. Yeah. Yeah, bullet, um, bullet, top man. Mm-hmm. So you made your debut um, in uh, one of the, the games against um, Forest, Forest uh, Green. Forest Green, yeah. And it was 4-1. Um, and on that game, I don't know if it was direct from one of your throw-ins or 
um, you know, where we scored. But, you know, was that something that was always a part of your game, the, the long throws? Yeah, it was. Um, I used to play as a striker as a kid. Yeah. And, um, uh, it, you know, I, I, I never really... I never really utilised it because obviously I, it's like a, it's like when Drogba used to take corners. I don't, I don't see the point of that. You're the best header of the ball. Why yeah. would you be taking corners? But then when, when I, when I got into the England squad at under 18, I, I was moved into defence. Yeah. And um, that's when I started properly. You know, I always had a long throw, but I've started to work on it, um, as it, as it's a weapon. You know, it, it, it proved to be a weapon throughout my career. Some important games where you know where it was needed, yeah. you know, but it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, pe people tend to to look at your long throw and think you can't play football. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think any player that's ever trained with me um, has seen the ability, has seen my ability, you know, and that's that's I wouldn't say more important, but it's important to be respected by your peers as well for for your yeah. footballing talents. I think. Definitely, you yeah. know, as a footballer, if you, you know, you gotta have a bit of pride, um, and if and if you know, if if you can't and if you don't want to impress your, your teammates as well as the fans, then I don't think you deserve to to put on a football shirt. And do you remember much about that game? It was uh, the the four one victory over Forest Green. There, do you remember much about the actual game itself? No, I, I remember, uh, as they say, it was a bit of a blur. Yeah. But um, I I just wanted to impress. I, I so wanted to impress that um, certain parts of the game, uh, I, you know, it didn't really matter to me. I wasn't really bothered about little parts of the game. I, I was coming to Stevenage. In my head, I was coming to Stevenage to, to work, work really hard on my game, and, yeah. then, and then move on and, and move on. That was that, or, move, or move forward with Stevenage. Whatever way it was, yeah. I just wanted to, to, to be, I wanted to play at the top level badly. And you spoke about Wayne Turner there as well. Um, you know, you said, you said you played under him previously before playing under him again at Stevenage. So what are your experiences of uh, playing under him like? Yeah, um, Wayne, um, like I said, he was, he was a gentleman. Um, I, I'd known him um, as, as more of a, like a technical director. He, he used to come in and, you know, find out your progress, um, find out how you was progressing and if you needed any extra training or whatever or whatnot. Yeah. Um, so he used to identify your weaknesses and, and try and work on those things. And, and he always had time for you, you know. Um, he, he, he really cared about um, your, your mental well-being and your, your physical well-being. And, you know, the, you know, the four corners of football, you, you, just like the psychological side of the game. He wanted to work on all of that. He was a coach. Um, he, was a, he was a really good coach. And... Um, you know, it was just when I when I had an, an opportunity to work with him on a day to day basis, I, I was you know I jumped at the chance. You know, the, the players that the players that um way, that he's coached, your Gary Doherty's, Emerson Boyce, Matthew Taylor, yeah, um, Matt Spring, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. he's, he's he's coached us all. We yeah. all came through at Luton, and he and he's had a hand in that. So, you know, I, I thought it was just it was just you know an easy decision for me to, to come across. And then Paul's put a message there saying a great defender too. Um, and he also put another one there saying he'd love playing alongside you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. He, Paul, listen, the, the thing with, with Bullet was that he put he put his effort in. He yes. put the effort in. He wasn't somebody that was um, going to shirk responsibility either. If he if he ever done something wrong, he'd put his hands up. And that was a sign of, of, of a good team, I think, where, where you've got a group of men, young footballers, um, coming in for, for, for one cause, which was to improve and, and move on. You know, we, we you know, he was, uh, you know, I loved playing with him. He'd make a run. If, if I didn't pass the ball, he would say to me, you know, Jude, he would pull me to one side and say, Jude, I like making this run. Make sure you play the ball. And that's, that's all football's about. Just communicating and trying to, trying to win a game. <laughs> trying to win a game is, is quite yeah. simple. And then uh, what are your experiences of some of the Derby games, you know, the likes of Woken and Barnet and, and Kettering, for example? Um, I don't think don't think I played in many. Um, I'm trying to think. I think our, our biggest game at the time, not biggest game, but a team that a couple of teams that we 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 had some some battles with was Dagenham. Yeah, Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some battles against them and Farnborough. Yeah, I remember when they 
they had, I think it was Holloway and people like that, Watson. Um, uh, so basically just before Wesley came and, and brought all of the guys with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just before. So, yeah. So, you know, I don't think we had any, any, any grudge matches as such, mm. you know, but I thought, player for player, I thought we were, in terms of talent, I thought I don't I didn't think there was anyone that could touch us. You had Willow as well. You had loads of players that were, were quality players. I thought Jason centre off could lift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Travis came in. You know, I, th I thought I thought that was a great squad. And if it if they stayed together, um, as you could see from people like DJ and even myself moving on yeah. and going to M Milton Keynes and so on, mm -hmm. if we if we could keep if we could have kept that squad together, and 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 forgot forgot about you know. So I think I think at times there was a few a few big characters there, um, and I think ego got in the way sometimes of of certain players progressing, um, okay. and I would say Paul Armstrong was one of those people that I thought you know in terms of a career he should have he should have definitely played higher, um, but I think I think at times because Stevenage was a big club at that level or is a big club, yeah. at the time it was a big club at that level, and I think you had some players that were coming to the end of their career. Um, that was still, you know, they've, they've maybe had a, a good career and played in the Premier League or whatever, what have you, and they and came down. And sometimes it, it suffocated yeah. the, 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 the 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 young players. It stopped them from 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 progressing. You uh -huh. know, I'm one of the players that I had a I had a very very close relationship with was was um, George Boyd, and yes. I remember his first training session. Um, his first training session, he was 15, I think he was, 15 or 16. Wayne brought him in and um, he's run with the ball, giving it away. Run with the ball, giving it away. But I was looking at this guy and I whispered to someone, I said, he, he plays like Chris Waddle. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, I pulled him to one side and I said, boy, do you listen? I used to call him Bart for some reason. I thought he looked like Bart Simpson. But okay. um, I said, Bart, listen, come here. And I says to him, I don't care what anyone wants to say, any of these older pros. Work on your skills. If you lose the ball a thousand times, I'm not bothered because yeah. I'm a defender and I'm here to I'm here to win the ball back. Do you get what I'm saying? So just go and make something happen. And and if you ever saw the joy in his face when when he when I told him that, I said I'll back you. I'll fight your corner. Just go and go and develop your skills. And he and to be honest, I'm not saying it was because of me, but it I helped think him along the way. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It it gave him that. It gave him that um the impetus to now go on and 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 do his skill and not have in the back of his head that he was going to get shouted at by an older pro. Yeah. You know, because I think at that time as well, um, non-league football was very much head it, kick it. It was, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was very much head it, kick it. And it, and, and it you know, it took, it took for, I think that's why DJ struggled a little bit and, and Paul Armstrong. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say struggled, but managers wanted a big, a big brute of a striker. Um, yeah. Instead of, and they're, they're sort of smaller, yeah, 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 and like I mean, smaller, I mean maybe, maybe a bit quicker, like, yeah, and that type of thing. Do you get what I'm saying? And I can't remember rapid, what game yeah. it was. We played a game, it might have been Boston or something, yeah, where it was, uh, where it was, it was myself, uh, a bullet, and I think it was DJ, and it was more, more the reserve, Jamie Campbell, okay, Louis yeah. Riddle, yeah, uh, Louis Riddle, people like that. It was more of, of, of like a, a second string team as such. Okay. I think that's what, you know, it wasn't like yeah. Kirk Jackson and all those. It was the ones that are on the bench and coming back from injury. And I think yeah. it was Boston or someone we played against. And we absolutely battered them football-wise. Absolutely battered them football-wise. And I think that 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 made it a little bit more difficult for the manager. Um, so, then he, so then the manager had to try and... When you had people like DJ and that thinking they should play, the manager now had to... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, like I, I get what you're saying. Kind of, um, he kind of had to rethink and re rejig things a bit. He did, he did, but he had the pressure from the older players. So, yeah, as a manager, you you want to keep your job, don't you? So, yeah, sometimes that can stifle the um, the talent that's coming through, you know. And I think Stevenage back then, if they would have just stuck with the younger players um, and had one or two older older heads, stuck yeah. with the younger players, um, I think they would have been, you know, I think we'd have, I think we'd have got, got a couple of promotions, to be honest. Once we got used to the league and the understanding of it, because when I first came to, to Stevenage, um, 
I found, I found, I found, I, I didn't find it that difficult. I, I didn't find the games hard. No, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so yeah. us as young players, we, we were full of confidence and we wanted, we thought we could take on the world. It was fearless. Yeah. You know, so I think, I think, you know, as a football club, if you, if you harness that and, and, and mix it and blend it with, with some, some older players, I think, I think I think Stevenage would have, I think we would have got a couple of promotions. That's just me anyway. You know. And that's you know what that's what Stevenage are doing now. Obviously, it's been confirmed today that the club are now going to be uh, playing League Two football next season. Um and it you know it, it looks like that's what they're doing at the moment as well with uh, the young coach Alex Ravel um and, and Lenny Lawrence to help him out. You know, they've gone in, they've they've got five or six from non league and you know they've added three or four experienced pros in there as well. Lenny Lawrence is an absolute genius. Absolutely, yeah. He's um, like I said, he was my he was my first manager at Luton, uh-huh. and um, he goes he's quite, he goes about his work. He, he's quite methodical. He's he's quiet, you know, and and he he will say one or two things to you as a young footballer just to get you to understand life as well as as well as um as well as football. And I think he's perfect for someone like Alex to have um uh, beside him. He will he will absolutely. Um, teach him the teaching the ropes, perfect, perfect partnership. And then we've got a, a comment here from Richard. Um, I think he's he's kind of changing the the Beatles song "Hey Jude" in terms of your your throw-ins. Uh, and he's, he's put "Hey Jude, you took throw-ins and made them longer." <laughs> oh well, like I said, you know, um, when when I remember when I first came to to Stevenage, um, everybody yeah. was speaking about my throw-in. Yeah. But we had a training session and I played uh, centre midfield in training and they started to call me Vieira. And then I played okay. centre midfield. I played centre midfield for, for Stevenage a couple yeah. of times. So, yeah. you know, yes, the long throw is definitely definitely a weapon and it's something that I'm glad that I've, you know, that was part of my armoury um, yeah. uh, in my career. But I, I also want to be remembered for being a decent footballer that could play with both feet. Oh, absolutely. I remember, you know, you could do a job in midfield and at the back as well. You did, uh, you know, centre mid, centre back, right back. You played in, uh, you know, three or four different positions in your time. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, you know, if, for every... I've played under some managers. I've played under Di Matteo, yeah. um, Paul Lintz, Martin yeah. Allen. Um, and each each one of those managers all gave me a new contract. None of them ever released me. I ever I, I always moved on. Um, when I was at... When I was at um, Lincoln, the manager left Lincoln and went Peterborough and brought me with him straight away. Yeah, as his first I did, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, there, there must be something that I'm that I'm doing. You know, uh, you know, I, I like to think I put in maximum effort. Um, I like to think that I'm a person that wants to please the fans as well. So if the fans want more us to run harder, I'm, I'll put my effort in. I'll work as hard as I can for the team. Um, you know, I, I'd like to think that you know I got into football for the right reasons. For, yeah. for for enjoyment um, and to, to have a career in something where I come from in in Tottenham North London uh-huh. um, not not a lot of people um, not a lot of people get out um, of the area and get an opportunity like I did and I wanted to to make sure I, that I could come back to the place I call home and um, and you know have have people proud proud of what I've done and have myself proud of what I've achieved. Um, I may not have played in the Premier League. Well, I didn't play in the Premier League, but I played football at a certain level, which you know, as a young as a young footballer, it was a dream. It was a dream come true. Right. Yeah, you went into League One. You established yourself in League One. Played for a couple of teams in League One there. So, you know, that's yes, it's not Premier League, but it's you know, some of the teams in League One have have had history of playing in the Premier League, for example. So you're still competing against some big sides. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was it was it was. It was strange, you know. Every time, every time I got on a coach and pulled up at a ground, it was that the butterflies in your stomach and you're excited, you yeah. know, week in week out. And when when we when um, Southampton and Leicester and uh, Leeds were in were in League One and played up at Ellen Road and went down to Southampton's new ground, it was it was unbelievable. It's things that will stay with me for the rest of my life. And if and if as a coach I can um, help help a young person, male or female, um, realise their dream, then, you know, I'm all in. And then we've got Kieran there as well. Um, good player, top bloke. That's Kieran, who was uh, physio at the time. 
Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've not seen him for years. He, he helped me. He helped me quite a lot. I went on loan to Hornchurch. Yeah. Um, and I got injured and... It was it was a, it was a bad injury, bad knee injury, and um, uh, some some you know some 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 evenings with with Kieran, you know, um, I'm there feeling sorry for myself, and he, he kept me buoyant, he kept me kept me motivated, and you know for that I, I I respect him for that, so I'd like to thank him for that. Yeah, Kieran's a lovely guy. Um, I, I've known Kieran for a number of years actually. Um, I used to live up at, at Chancellor's Road in uh, in Stevenage here, um, just around the corner from where Kieran was at the time and uh, used to play football together and all of that. Right. And then for a, a couple of years. Yeah, well, a good a good few years, in fact. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the LDV Vans as well. Um, obviously, we beat Swansea and that. And then we played Luton as well. And it was the 4-3. Uh, Luton beat us 4-3. Do you remember, yeah. you know, much about playing against your former team? And what, you know, what was that like? Yeah, I remember it. Um it was a bit of a strange one because I had I had left Luton because I wanted to play, um, and then when and then when we actually played against Luton, it it was it was um, all the all the young players that were playing. Um, yeah, Joe yeah. Dean, um, oh, what's what's that lad's name again? But all the youngsters were playing, and I was thinking. I was ahead of all of these. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. ahead of all of these. I, I might as well, I should have just stayed because I would have been playing now. But again, you know, people like uh, Curtis Davis and Leon Barnett and people like that, that used to ask me questions because I was a, I was a pro. I got yeah. my pro early. Okay. So I was a pro before them. And, you know, maybe me leaving was, was what helped them kickstart their career. Yeah. And so at the end of yeah. the day, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they were they were good players. They were top players. But everything happens for a reason. And, um, you know, they're good kids. They're good lads. Um, Curtis, good lad. I think he's still playing at the moment. Yeah, he Curtis. Derby or somewhere like yeah, that? Yeah, he's, he's doing well for himself. He's championship, if I remember rightly, yeah. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's very mature. From when he was young or when he was 18, 19, very mature. Um um, I'm just going to see where Curtis is. I'm just going to have a little look, actually, to see what club he's at. Yeah, yeah, as a as a footballer, he was very, very humble. He knew his he knew he knew his strengths. He knew his weaknesses. And it, yeah, and, he's know, at, yeah, he's at Derby. Yeah, yeah, and he he was a student of the game. You know, there was times where Kurt used to call me to one side and say, "Dude, remember when you done that last week? Like, how could you?" And and he would always ask questions. Um, there's not many footballers like that. Um, but I'm I'm really proud of him. He he started off um, he started off at Luton. Um, very raw, and mm -hmm. he's turned into a, a, a seasoned professional. Somebody that, when I hear talk, um, he's always has has something good to say and positive about whoever he's talking about. Um, sometimes I see him do the punditry and that. Yeah, um, yeah. He's yeah. always he's always been positive, and he gives a good account of himself. You know, and as a as a as a as a black as a black man, mm -hmm. um, it's good to see. And uh, yeah, Kieran's put their late night uh, rehab session at the moment. It's, it was a pleasure working with you there. Um, yeah. And then Giggs, he's put there. Love that he's from Tottenham and he's a gooner. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's 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 funny that because, um, like I said, it was my first ever football memory. Yeah. Um, watching watching Arsenal, so um, I just stuck with them from that. You know that, that that's what gave me the football bug. So you know, as a person, that that's that was my first football memory. So I just I just stayed with it, I just stayed with it. And then Kieran's put here twenty seven years. Yeah, so I think it's I think that he means is how long I've known him for. It's uh, it's, it's not it's not as long as that, mate. Um, it, I think it might be about sixteen, seventeen. Uh, it's not twenty seven. I'm not uh, as old as as you think, mate. I, I moved there when I was um, I think I was uh, just starting secondary school. So uh, it's probably more like seventeen years. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a que question here from Russ as well. Um, who was the best player that you played against during your career? Hmm. Um. Ah, so that's a tough one. Pro probably, probably Bergkamp. Okay, probably, you played against, played against Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, yeah. 
probably against Dennis Bergkamp. Um, but one, but one, um, like I said, I, I was a super confident footballer. Um, I, I, I didn't fear any players. Um, yeah. Where was that when you played against Dennis? Was that in pre-season here at Stevenage or was that somewhere yeah. else? Yeah. yeah, it was at, it was at Stevenage. Was that um, when uh, Thierry Henry played in that game as well? It was him and, and Dennis and, and Ray Parler and, and Colin. Ray Parler. Yeah, yeah. Ray Parler definitely played. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I, you know, my, in my career, uh, you know, I pride, I pride myself on when I played against my opponent that they were going to get substituted. Yeah. And especially when I was at MK, I would say out of 100 games, the player that I played against directly, my opposite number was was I would say, out of 100 games, I'd say 85 times they the got player got substituted yeah. when okay. they were playing against me. So I always I always put, like I said, I always put the effort in. When you played against me, you knew it weren't going to be easy. Yeah. Um, and where I had the, the experience of playing an attacking role, I kind of knew when someone was going to drop their shoulder and try and cut in or whatever. And I was quick. You know, I think when you're fast... It gets you out of a lot of, you know, a lot of tight situations. Um, the, the one part of my game that I wasn't, uh, I think I, I, I didn't enjoy or I wasn't very, very good at was, was heading the ball. I could get up and, and get my head there. Yeah. But for, for someone as tall as I was, I think, I think, you know, especially in, in the non-league side of things, I think managers wanted you to sacrifice your game of playing football and, and, and head it. And, and be horrible and bite people in the back of the neck and all of that. And I, I just wasn't brought up like that as a footballer. I was always taught to, to you, you beat your opponent with, with skill. And yeah. yeah. Do you get what um, I'm saying? So, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In terms of, um, we'll, we'll go to that question from James in a minute as well. But in terms of, you know, Steam, you just run as well in the FA Trophy, um, getting to the final against Yeovil. Do you remember... You know, what, what were your kind of experiences of that? The the, the trophy campaign and the, the game at Villa Park and, you know, all of the, that came with that. Well, if you remember, we, we I think we went up to, is it Morecambe? Yeah. Did we beat Morecambe? Yeah, it was at the semis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Morecambe we beat and it was it was, it was a great day. Yeah. Um, and I think we was a little bit disappointed because we thought we, thought we should have done a little bit better in the league mm -hmm. um, with, with the squad that we had. Um, but yeah. The, the actual day itself, it was, a, it was a massive disappointment for me personally because, uh, is it Fisher, centre midfielder? Yeah, Matt Fisher. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I was playing centre mid with, um, with Sam McMahon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing centre mid and um, I thought I was doing quite well. And um, Fisher was injured and, and he couldn't run. He couldn't move. And I just thought, I've, I felt at the time... Obviously, I understand football a bit better now, but I thought it was disrespectful to the players that a little bit like Mora when he done well for Spurs and then Harry Kane started up front. Yeah, I, yeah, thought, yeah. I thought it was a little bit disrespectful to to bring somebody in who's who's not fit, um, admittedly so. Yeah, and and I think as a as a player, when you're on the pitch, knowing that the person in central midfield that the engine room of the team the heartbeat of the team is not 100% I don't think that that fills the squad with confidence when you're going no. out to play a game I um, remember uh, obviously you know you mentioned Sam there um, I spoke to Sam on, on here just the other week actually as well um, and he's you know was a, was a really talented player obviously he had his uh, fair share of injuries to deal with as well didn't he yes 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 and I think you know <clears throat> like I said Myself, DJ, us as young players, Louis Riddle from West Ham, Wormall. Yeah. We yeah. were all young players that, you know, we, 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 we all thought we had pedigree. Um, we all thought we could come in and, 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 and do a job. And um, I, I just think that it was, a little bit, it was a little bit, for me, it was, it, it was annoying because with the, with the squad of players that, we've, that we had at the time, I, I don't think the way we lost to, to Yeovil, I think we should have, you know, could have made a better account of ourselves, but like I said, there's there's a load of there's a lot of politics in football. Yeah. Um, I've realised, and you know, sometimes as a young player, you just got to keep your mouth shut, get your head down, and work your socks off. And when you get your opportunity, take it. You know, it's all well and good saying, "Oh, I think I'm this, and I think I'm better than this player or that player, or whatever." But when you you will get your opportunity, and when you do, you you got to you got to um, you got to show people what you can do. 
a little yeah, bit like absolutely. a little bit like Gwen Doozy now at, at Arsenal. Yeah, he's getting a little, a little bit ahead of himself, and I think it's excellent, excellent from the manager that he's just not taking it, and and yeah, I, that will help Gwen Doozy. Out of the squad for a bit, yeah, yeah. That will help him. That will help him. You know. Do you think he'll stay as well? Do you think you know? Just going off off topic, do you, like a little bit. Do you think he'll stay with Arsenal? I think he's got to. Yeah. Um, I think he will stay. Um, there's, there's there's a lot of there's some, some big clubs coming in for him. Mm. Oh my phone's hold on. it's gone quiet right. again. I don't know what's is that there? You got it? It's gone quiet. Have you got it there? We'll uh, hopefully get Drew back in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll we'll start to wrap things up ever so shortly as well. Not too long. Uh, it shouldn't be too long. I don't know what was happening there in terms of uh, the signal or whatever it may have been there where he is. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll be back with us in a minute. Uh, just uh, stay there, guys, and, and keep tuned. We'll uh, hopefully get him back ever so shortly as well. Uh, we've got quite a lot to, uh, you know, some, some of the bits and pieces that I want to talk to him about as well. Uh, so hopefully, uh, he can, um, you know, jump back in and we can carry on with that in a minute. Um, and uh, we can carry on speaking to him about, um, you know, some some more bits and pieces there in terms of Stevenage. Because uh, there's a little bit more I wanted to, to ask him in regards to his first goal for the club and that sort of thing. Um, so hopefully he will be able to get back with us in a minute um, and uh, we can carry this over into, uh, you know, the last bit of this and, and then wrapping it up. So uh, hopefully we won't be too long. Um, just going to see. There guys back. All right. You right, mate? Is that better? Yes, Apologies. No, that, that's absolutely fine. No worries. Um, well, uh, yeah. So you know, we were just talking a little bit about Gwen Doozy there. Do you think you know, and whether you think he'll stay with Arsenal and um, yeah, just carry on where you were. You know what you were saying there. Well, well, the, the the clubs that have come in for him, there's some there's some mass not come in, but the clubs that are reported interested. to be interested, yeah, um, are some some big clubs there. So it's going to be very difficult for him to to turn that down if it if it comes about, yeah, you know. Um, but um, I think Arsenal is a club that's known for giving giving young players opportunities, and he'll get if he he's a he's a top player. So I don't think he needs to to worry about getting that opportunity again. You know, I think in terms of world football, I think he's he's one of the best in, yeah, in, in, his, in his age bracket. So yeah. all he's got to do, you know, he's got a great touch. He's just got to work on his, his temperament. Um, and he's got to understand that, you know, the, the, the football world will continue without you. It will it will go on. So, you know, you've got to be a part of that. Not everyone's going to gonna agree with what you say. Um, yeah. But at some point, you've got to grow up and realise that you're there to just play football. Do you get, do you get what I'm saying? So just Yeah, absolutely. Just kind of knuckle down and, yeah. So, turn, so, go on. So, as a as a fan, I would like to see Gwenduzi stay. But as a coach and somebody that's been in football, um, if, if his attitude's not right, um, he shouldn't be anywhere near the other players. Is that the same, you know, are your thoughts the, the same on Ozil or is that a little bit different? I think Ozil's a little bit different. Um I think his style of the, the the way he plays, he looks lazy. Yeah. Um, he looks like a lazy individual. It's like with Ozil, it's like <clears throat> it's like some of the players that used to come up from London mm -hmm. uh, to play for Stevenage and Luton or whatever. There's this there's this thing that they think you got a chip on your shoulder or you're you're a bit lazy. But you know that's the, the London swagger. You know if you look at if you look at basketball and and, and those sort of sports in America. The, the the young players that come from the Bronx and New York and whatever they've got a little bit of swagger when they're playing basketball and I think that's just that's just you know Ozil Ozil's character not character his personality you know he he looks like he doesn't actually care when he's playing the match yeah, but then yeah. when you look at when you look at his ability and some of the 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 way he can he can manipulate the ball and and put players in and bring other players into 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 play you know I think he's somebody that's you know, in terms of talent, I've, you know, he's a, he's an amazing footballer, and in terms of entertainment, you know, he's someone that I I, I like watching. You know, yeah, but he's a really of, talented player, really good. Yeah. Uh, he is one of the world class players that we've got in the squad. Yeah, there's a Bama Young. Yeah, there's him, and you know, uh, Lacazette, Pepe could be in that bracket as well. But there's only four or five. There's not like 
lows like they used to be. Well, again, if you look at Arsenal's team, yeah. Um, back back when when we were a force, mm-hmm. we 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 could lose the ball, and then you had Vieira, you had Sol Campbell, you had Loren, you had Ashley Cole, you had pace. Yeah. Now, yeah, when yeah. Ozil loses the ball, Arsenal are in trouble. So if Ozil was part of that invincible squad, yeah. then I think he would have taken that to another level, that team. But now, when Ozil plays in this team, because the team around him isn't strong enough, it's now difficult for him to get game time. Yeah, that's very playing. much. Yeah, I think that's very much right as well. And you know, um, the the change in system and all that as well hasn't really helped him out because there's no place for him in that squad now because they're not playing with a number ten. Yeah, yeah, and and again, like I said with um, with George Boyd before. Yeah. Defenders have got to take responsibility. Arsenal haven't really um, got any defenders. David Luiz is is like almost like an auxiliary midfielder. The way he, the way he plays, he's not. Yeah. He's, he's a defender, but he's not someone you can trust. He Arteta's getting there with him, where he's just telling him basically clear your lines, you know, so he doesn't make mistakes. But mm-hmm. I'm saying that the, the makeup of the team, there's not many defensive minded players, players that are happy to just win the ball back. For the yeah. team. And with David Luiz, for example, you've got to be really careful with him because, yes, he, you know, Arteta's learning, well, sorry, Arteta's teaching him a bit in terms of his defensive, uh, you know, you know how, how to defend on that. But he's always got that, you know, last ditch foul in him, like what happened against Watford. Yeah, yeah. He's got that in him. And um, again, this is where now you, you, your manager's getting paid millions of pounds each per year. And it's it's a conundrum, but it's one that I think is easily sorted. Just yeah. move him out of that position, put him into midfield or hold him midfield a role, and get him you know a, a little bit like what Gwen Doozy does. Yeah, and and just get just get him to play because he can play. He's, you know he's he's got his flair. He's got a great touch. I think David Luiz. We can't have both, him, we can't have both of them in defensive mid though. That'd be hair overload. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh my gosh, It'd be good banter though. It'd be good yeah. fun, eh? But no, it's, it's, it's one of them where, you know, as a manager now, you've just got to keep shuffling the deck. Yeah. And when you find something that that um, that fits, you stick with it, you know, where all the players are comfortable. But David Luiz is getting older as well. Yeah. So, you know, in ter- listen, to be a top team, I think you've got to have pace at the back. I think you've got to. Um, you know, if you look at Man City this year, they nearly, they nearly got to, they nearly won the league, but... Um, you've got your Fernandinho is not he's not the quickest. Laporte's not the quickest. Um, um, you've never got Kyle Walker there, but other than that, they, they, they ain't got no pace in defence really. So the difference between them and Liverpool is is, is Van Dijk and, and and Gomez. They're quick. Yeah, they're flyers. Yeah, uh, Trent flyer. Robinson. They will fly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, I think you could be as as good as players think they are, or whatever. Pace is something. This you know, if if you know how to use your pace, then then teams can't stop that. No, nah. and we'll go back to just talking a little bit about Steenridge as well now. Um, so you scored one goal for the club. Um, do you remember much about that goal against Hereford and the worm celebration that came after? <laughs> <as well? laughs> I thought I knew that was going to come out. Oh mate, I, I, I just I just learned to do it. I can't remember who showed it to me. Yeah. But I just learned to do it. And obviously, I've gone from being a striker as a kid, yeah. scoring loads of goals and, and yeah. doing whatever. And then I've gone into defence for, for years and I, I'd never scored like in a, in a first team game. So it was it was just emotion overload, really. I, di- I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. I, I, it wasn't planned. Um, but I just, you know, was it Her- who was it against? Her- no, Hereford Her- 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 United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it 2 0 or something? 3 uh, 1, I think. Let's have a look. Uh... Yeah, 3 1. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, was just, it was just one of those things, really. Yeah. You know, and, you know, listen, ask anybody about me. I, I love to laugh and a joke. Mm. You know, I, I love to have a, a laugh and a joke and, and to create memories. And, you know, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad that you know. I'd, I'd like to think that the fans uh, respected my 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 work that I put in, my work ethic. 
Yeah. I'd like hope I'd like to think that they respected my professionalism. Um, yeah, hundred percent. You know, when you came in, you know, as I said before, you know, you were versatile in uh, where you could play, and you always done a job, whether it was you know centre mid, centre back, or at right back, or you know wherever it was that you were uh, selected to play. Exactly, and that was it. Was one of them where, you know, I, I listen. I understand how difficult it is for managers, yeah, and, and coaches. And and they've got to they've got to pick they've got to pick a team and I always say I coach now and I always say to players when they say can I play in this position and that position I say yeah. every position is the same you got to run pass and tackle in yeah. any position that you play in yeah so you know at the end of the day if 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 you're going to grumble about the position you're playing on the pitch then your your mind's not right to to play the game so you, then you don't deserve to play. Nah, that's, uh, yeah, that's a, a very valid and fair point, actually, as well, what you said there. Um, and then uh, we'll we'll go back to, uh, you know, we spoke about that there uh, there briefly as well with uh, the gold and the celebration. Um, in terms of when you left the club, Graham Wesley was, uh, that was his first spell when he when he came in, when, and he brought all of the guys, he brought in Holloway and Watson and Carroll and, you know, all of the defenders as well, Buncey and, and Mickey Warner and, and Justin Gregory and all of that. So, you know, did you straight away, you know, want to go out and, you know, did you kind of, you know, at that point think it was the right time to move on and did you think you'd sort of struggle to keep your place at that point? No, I thought I was better than all those players that you just mentioned. Um, yeah. um, not not in like a, not like they weren't good players, just yeah. I had confidence in my ability. Yeah. And um, when, when, when Mr. Wesley came in, um, he said, look, I don't know you as a person. Yeah. Um, I've never, I've never really seen you play like as such, but I've got, I'm bringing players in uh, that I rate, that I rate highly, yeah. and um, you're not going to play. It was just as simple as that. Hmm. So it wasn't anything to do with attitude or me wanting to leave or or nothing like that. You know. No, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, and I thought what he done to me was was um was, wasn't. It wasn't it wasn't nice for a young footballer. He, t he totally said I weren't allowed to train with the first team. Yeah. Um, I weren't allowed to have lunch with the first team. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't know what I had done as as a 19, 20 year old trying to make your way in the game. Um, who who was always known for having a, a good attitude. Yeah. I'm never never rude, never disrespectful. I'm not. I'm weren't out in the nightclubs doing madness like I, I was uh, after training. I would. I would go and um, teach in in schools uh, up yeah. in Stevenage, you know. So, so there was never, there was never my attitude was never in question, and I think the way he dealt with me, it was it was a little bit hard to it was a little bit hard to take as a young footballer, um, and then obviously I had an opportunity. Um, Stevenage said I could leave the club, and I yeah. had an opportunity to go to a a championship team, yeah, and yeah. Stevenage blocked it. Oh, really? Graham, yeah, um, well, Graham, was it Graham or was it Phil or Mitchell the two? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's fair for me to, to make a no, comment. I don't fine. really no, know. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I know Graham Wesley's got, um, he's, he's got his, uh, he, some people don't like him. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to add to that. And, no, like, that's, it, it, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, like I said, me, we didn't really cross paths. Um, I thought he, I thought he was quite disrespectful. But I could be wrong. Um, and he, he just said to me, he said, look, you can go to any team um, lower than us, but you can't go to a team higher than us. And I said, well, why? And um, um, I was told that I'm a fan's favourite. Yeah. So I thought, pick. Yeah. All right. That's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Tick. Yeah. Um, you're a fan's favourite. And if I let you... I don't know if it was the club or Graham or whoever, but yeah. it was to the tune of, I would look silly if I let you go for free to a team higher than us. But you okay. said you didn't. You said you didn't want me, so yeah. let so me go then. Be, you should be free to go and move to wherever. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, so it's it's one of those things. Um, I can understand it a little bit. You know, a fan fans might say, you know, why have you why have you let someone go for free? Why didn't you sell them? Like. Why? Why would you let someone go who we love? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll close it this time. Is that for the right, though, mate? 
Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, why would they? Why, why would you as a club mm-hmm. want to let want to let a player go that's worth something for free? I suppose. Yeah, so, you and know, it's so. like you know the the club even with Boydy when when Boydy was sold, you know they're they're looking at selling these players on to to get some uh, money for you know investment into the squad for the next 3%. season or for that season or whatever. So yeah, because I'm on it. Yeah, sorry, mate. Go on. No, I was just saying, even with Boydy as well, you know, you, uh, the club will, wait, uh, will you know, um, basically just, uh, yeah, you know, wanting to get these players out to, to get some money in for these players and, uh, you know, invest again, yeah. Well, I think, I think as a manager, like I said, like I said, I've, I've not managed that level, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know it. I don't know, Hollis, I don't know everything about coaching and management. So, yeah. again, it's just my opinion. Um I was a versatile footballer that had come from uh, um, League One or League Two. I can't remember what Luton were in at the time. Yeah, I think they were and, League Two. There was, I think they were at least one league above us, yeah. Right, and, and a couple of seasons, uh, a season before that, um, I was selected for an under-18 squad with the likes of Jermaine Defoe, Leon Knight, Jay Boffroyd, Leon Britton, um, Graham Stack, Scott Goodin, yeah, Neil yeah. Jenkins, Alex Tapp. Like, we, were, we were all in that squad. So, I must have had some sort of ability, and um, I think as a as a as a football club, if I was if I'm a manager or a chairman, I'd like to not, I'd like to try and get something back off off, off my investment. Absolutely, you know, yeah, yeah. They didn't pay, they didn't pay me bundles. I wasn't on I wasn't on massive money. It was yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. It was enough to keep to you know to keep you know my development going. Yeah, um, keep me keep me sticking over. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't about money at that point. It was about getting the experience, um, you know, and, and having the opportunity to prove that I was deserved of, of, of making money out of the game because, you know, that's, there's, there's many ways to, 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 to show your success is through trophies, medals, or, and, and how much you get paid. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. I, 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 wanted, I wanted trophies. I wanted medals. I wanted recognition. I wanted man of the match every single match. Yeah. Like when we were playing, I wanted to, I was waiting. Am I going to get man of the match every game? You know, and, and I don't, I don't really remember getting man of the match that often, but then again, I don't remember getting subbed that often. So no, true, yeah, where, wherever I went, you know, in my whole career that, you know, I was, I wasn't the player to be subbed. And, it, and even if I was, even if I was um, injured, I was always asked to come along with the squad. Okay. To, and get involved. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To, to help out and to encourage and you know to be a positive a positive influence within the change room which which when you've got people like Paul Lintz and, and, and Martin Allen and people like that saying you're you're valuable to the squad even if you're not playing I want you yeah. to come on the, on the coach for me those those are the sort of like the highlights of my career when you're rubbing shoulders with people that have played at a very high level played under some great managers themselves and to identify you as somebody with with a good attitude after what happened to me in my career um at clubs like Stevenage and 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 other clubs um it it was for me that was it was nice it was nice to be recognized for that you know and do you remember um I don't know if it was during your spell that the fans had the opportunity to vote for um that the substitutions was that right at some point was that during your spell um I'm trying to remember if that was under because I know it's happened uh and it was like you're like a, a you're the manager type thing, and and the fans were basically in charge of you know making the substitutions or I'm, putting a vote into the substitutions, or whatever. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. I remember a fan coming up to to, to the bench one time yeah. and telling Wayne telling Wayne Turner to get me on. Um, yeah. But no, I, I can't I can't really remember that. Like I said, you know that that side of football, I, I wasn't. I I listen. I had confidence in my ability. I really did, yeah. uh, you know, and I used to train with people like uh, Jason Punchin and people like that after I left Stevenage because um, he was at MK with us and he was one of the first to say in a team meeting that when when in training, I'm, I'm going over the other side of the pitch. I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to beat Jude. He didn't yeah. have the ability, I thought, to get past me. So, you know, I was I was a I was a football person. I wanted to just prove myself as a footballer. Yeah, I wanted to win games. I wanted to have a laugh and a joke with my teammates, which I think is is important when you when you spend so much yeah. time with people. Yeah, day to day training I, and everything else. Yeah, 
But I genuinely wanted to be a top player. Genuinely. You know, one of, one of, one of my favourite players um, of, of recent times in the Premier League is James Milner. I love yeah. the way he goes about his work. Um, he plays every position. And, and yeah, he, very he, versatile again, yeah. He's a professional in every sense of the word. You know, he, he is professional. And I think that, I think that any young people that any young footballers that are, uh, are aspiring to become footballers or whatever or whatnot should take a leaf out of his book, you know, because if you're a manager and you've got 11 James Milners or 16 James Milners, yeah. you, 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 you're not in a bad place. Do you get what no, I'm saying? You're, yeah, you're never definitely in a... not. No, no, no. He's more than capable of, uh, you know, doing a job in about four different positions, really, you know, or sometimes even five. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So, you know, for me, for me, I loved my time at Stevenage. Um, it was it was a part of my 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 story, as they say. Yeah. Um, it was a chapter, and I think I think you know the majority of it was was um, was good. I think at the time when when I came in, um, uh, there was a lot of pressure on Stevenage to to get promoted. To do really well, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think the fans expected it. I think the, the 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 players thought they were going to just turn up and just be promoted, yeah. and I think I think the chairman done well to 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 get to get Mr. Wesley in because no matter what anybody says, he, he was successful. Yeah, um, definitely. He he was successful, and for that I respect him. Um, he he had his he had his methods, um, and and like I said, when you've got <clears throat> when you've got everyone pulling in the same direction, um, what, you know your methods they, they work. Um, you got you got players that buy into it and believe in it. Yeah. Um, I think that's half the battle. Um, I think if he'd have spent a little bit more time with me, well, not a little bit more time. He never spent a day with me. So, no, if, he, so if, he, if he spent some time chance, with me, your chance. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think he would have. I think he would have liked me as a footballer. I think you know. I think he would have respected me as a as a person and as a player, um, and and it was just unfortunate that I didn't get that that opportunity because I did have a. I think I had a a good bond with with the Stevenage fans. Um, like I said, I think I come in and um, I think I done my family proud. I was respectful to to people. I was I was a confident young footballer who who wanted to try and do the best I could for for the, for the football club and and for the area. Um, because like I said to you off the pitch, I used to do some coaching in schools. I think it was old Bradwell or something like that. Okay. In in some schools and that with, with Jamie Campbell and that. So yeah. It was um I bought I bought into the whole the whole let's try and make Stevenage a league club thing. And um like I said, it was just disappointing the way that um as a young person I've uh, you know, to be to be treated like that. If, if I didn't have the, the structure around me, family wise um, that that could have been something that that that, that broke me. It could have been. Okay. Yeah. So now we just got two more questions, really, and that's it. After that, it's just the final two. Um, so first one: What are your experiences of uh, racism in the game, and you know the Black Lives Matter movement that's going on now? Um, I've I've got a lot more experience of racism in normal life yeah. than on the pitch. Mm -hmm. um, but it did happen. Um, it did happen. There was a an incident that happened with me at Brentford, where a fan came up to me and um, I had to protect myself, mm -hmm. uh, which I did. Um, but yep, yeah, there was some there was some racism there, and I think, again, you know, it's it's, it's very it's very it's very difficult because you're a young person trying to play football and yeah. trying to be respected and 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 um, appreciated for your for your talents on the pitch. Mm -hmm. And I think there there are some time there were some times within within football where your colour did matter, and I, and and I think that's I think that's just it's it's, it's embarrassing really how we could be in, in you know in, in 2020 or wherever we're yeah. at, and and as a young person you still have to think, um, oh well, is the manager not picking me because I'm black? Now, yeah, and you know, you have to look at um, the the person's ability. You know, there's some some excellent footballers that are black players. You know, Sol Campbell, for example, is is one that springs to mind straight away. Well, well, the the 
<laughs> what you what you gotta understand about a racism and how and how people feel is there's a stigma um that that people attach to your race yeah and and your color um and that's like i said to you earlier on about uh, players coming from london and they're a little bit more chilled and a little bit more laid back yeah um managers start to think well all black players don't want to put the work in those those sort of comments get thrown around uh -huh. um and you know growing up as a as a young black footballer um we socialized differently where I'm from. Uh, yeah. We we never went to the pub. The pub wasn't, in terms of our culture, black people, we we, we never went to the pub straight after and had a pint. That's not what we did. So no, I think yeah. sometimes people looked at it as you've got a bad attitude and you don't want to link up with the squad. But that's just not what we did. It's you get just what I'm saying? each individual person, you know, some people do things differently. Some people might want to go to training and then, go back and, and relax and then, you know, prepare differently for the next day. Yeah. And I think, like I said, when you're, when you're from, you know, we're in England yeah. and I've, I've, I've had, I've had run-ins with the police, uh, with, with all different types of people. Mm -hmm. um, where I am now, I control a little area and I do my little bits and pieces. Okay. And I've, I've gone up to people before and I said, you know, for example, they were on my football pitch and I said, look, you're not allowed on here. Yeah, and then they're looking at me like, "Who are you?" kind of thing, and I'm thinking, "Hold on, one second." Go on. You right? Is that yeah? You there? No, we've we've lost him again. He should only be a minute. Um, but that's you know, just a, a little bit in regards to the Black Lives Matter and racism there as well in terms of football, um, and and you know, life as well, um. For, for black players and, and black individuals. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always good to, to hear that side of the story um, from somebody that's actually, you know, been through that themselves as well. So, go on, what were you saying? Where were you, uh, yeah. In, in yeah, regards, so, so like, it's yeah. just, it's, it's just, you get, a, you get a lack, there's a lack of respect hmm. when, you, when you're, when you're, when you're a black person, you know, you, you, you're not listened to, you're not, you're not valued as much as the next person. And that's just how it feels. Um, it's, it's easy for someone to say, no, nah, I'm not like that. But they, there's a saying that's, that, that goes, he who feels it knows it. And yeah, I yeah. think, I think you, you, you know, you'd have to, I've, like I said, I coach, I coach kids now and young people. And um, my end of 12s, I think it was, had a match. And something happened in the game and they just weren't getting the decision. And I'm saying, keep going, like, I want them to keep playing. Just keep going. Don't worry about the decision. Just keep playing. Yeah. yeah. And one of the kids, like, after the game, they sighed and went, the referee's racist. And I'm thinking, mm. why would you fit? Like, yeah. where does that come from? Because that's uh, not, yeah. I, no, don't, yeah. I don't teach, I don't teach that. Yeah, yeah. I'm teaching you how to play football. I don't want you to think like that. You go on a pitch and you're already one nil down in your head or you're, you're you get what I'm saying? You're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to go, that's, I don't preach hate. Like, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I don't, I'm not teaching you. I'm not saying this is a racist world. I don't think that's a nice thing to, to say to a yeah, young person. That's it. You go onto the pitch and, you know, everyone's individuals. Everyone is, um, that, that's it really. Everyone's included. It's, it's an inclusive place to be in a football pitch. But then, but then when you look at, you know, you look at, um, I can't remember, England played somewhere yeah. uh, when they were getting a racial, racial abuse. Yeah. Oh, I've been, um, yes, uh, with uh, Sterling and... Right. Tyrone Mings and all of that lot. Yeah, yeah. Right. So do you know do you know the fine was about thirty thousand pounds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's not if that's not just saying you're allowed to be racist, then I don't know what is. That's it, Bulgaria, yeah. That's it. 30, 30 grand or yeah. whatever it was. Don't quote me on that. But yeah. there should be some heavy, heavy sanctions for that. Do you get what I'm saying? And Definitely, and there just yeah. isn't. There just isn't. So as a young person as a young black person now, you're allowed to be abused basically. You can be abused. That's okay. That's what they, that's, yeah, that's how that's, it feels like. That's, that's what it feels like. like. Yeah. Which you is know, just but, completely how it shouldn't be. It should be the complete opposite of that. It should be, as I said, inclusive. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, you know, I, I look at I look at sport and I look at um life. Um the two are totally different. Yeah. Life, um there's a there's a cert we're in England, so um the majority of, of 
things that are run are run by people that are white. That's yeah, it. Yeah. English you get people. What I'm like, saying? Yeah. So, English people. Yeah, you know, yeah. How many? If can I get, can I get an opportunity now? If I sent my CV in to Stevenage and yeah. just a normal week, not me personally, but if I've if I've got um, I've got some young coaches here. If yeah. I if, if a young black person sends their, their their CV in and a young white person from Liverpool, just and just two normal people. Mm -hmm. the, the the way the way that young black people are feeling right now is that they they won't they their 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 application won't be looked at and I think that's that's just a, and that's it's, that, just so, it's just so you, but it's so sad yeah when you look at the professional game as well and you know the managers and all of that in in England there's well I, I don't know how many black managers there are but there's very few very very few yeah and and if you look at people like Scott Parker how easy they get into it. Yeah, uh, people like Scott Parker and Lampard, and and where they start 